Hello everyone. Today we are going to discuss neural network embeddings. So what are actually neural network embeddings? Neural network embeddings are low dimensional representations of high dimensional data. It is widely used to map categorical features into a space where similar or contextual items are closer together, making it easier for a neural network to process them. If you have high dimensional data like text data, if you have many many words then you can construct a neural network embedding space where contextually connected words will be in the neighborhood in that space also that helps you transform high dimensional data to low dimensional data so you can consider neural network embeddings as a matrix if we are considering text data for example if we have thousands of documents if you have n number of words then a neural network embedding matrix matrix should contain n rows and certain number of columns. The number of columns is a user setable parameters. So if you define that each word should be represented as a vector of length 100, then number of columns should be 100 in that embedding matrix. Now basically we use embedding matrix to transform text into numbers and embedding matrix consists of rows for words and columns for dimensions typically and as I said before, the number of columns is a settable parameter. The main idea again here is to make sure that contextually similar words will be in the neighborhood in that particular space. So if you take the word operating and the word systems, these two words should have a similar vector in this particular embedding matrix because operating systems, these two words are connected. Similarly, maybe two words like tall and trees these two words can be contextually connected as well if this pair is seen in the text then the vectors of these two words should be similar another property of the embedding matrix is that the numbers you have in the embedding matrix they are real valued numbers they are not really counts or they are not binary representations of words and a great thing about embeddings is that you can incorporate that embedding matrix within your neural network setting and you can make sure that the embedding matrix is trainable as well. So there are many reasons why we use embedding, especially we use it to enhance feature representation. High dimensional vectors for words have been an issue for decades. Representations like one hot encoding or count based representations or TFIDF based representations, they sometimes do not capture contextual similarity. The dense vector representation is space efficient. In addition to that, the embedding space can be considered as a special geometric space where you can compute distance where points are represented by vectors, which makes the embedding space usable by many downstream mathematical applications. Hence, making the data processing and handling quite easier, especially when you are processing the data for neural networks. Now, let's discuss how our embeddings learned. So, let's say that we have a text data set from that text data set we read the text through windows like i eat rice then you read eat rice and the next word so you might have certain window within that window you can pick up one word and make all the other words a target word or a context word or you can think of it as picking up two consecutive words where the first word will be a reference word and the next word will will be a target word or a context word. So if we use one hot encoding for the reference word or the first word that we are talking about, we have this one hot encoding. And here in this particular data set, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven words. That means in our word embeddings matrix, we'll have seven rows. Each word will be represented by a row. Again, number of columns should be defined by the user 
user or the programmer so for this particular word this row is selected and this specific row can become the input of whatever neural network you have afterwards so here in this context we are trying to predict the next word if this word is representing operating so this is the target word probably this is the word systems if this word is tall maybe we're trying to predict trees here as the target so based on all two consecutive words as we can read in the text we can actually train this model these word embeddings are actually trainable values and for each back propagation basically the neural network weights and biases are updated and the back propagation can also propagate in the embedding matrix the embedding matrix will be modified by the back propagation total number of trainable parameters you have would be all the weights and biases of the of this part of the neural network as well as number of cells you have in the word embeddings and after you run it for several epochs you will have a converged embedding space there are some famous examples if you train your model with a very large data set if you take the embedding of the word paris and subtract the embedding of the word france and with that if you add germany because this part would represent a capital then if, with that if you add germany is embedding then it is likely that you will get berlin which is the capital of germany so this is a classical example to get these sorts of strong relationships you will need very large data sets the main idea here is that embeddings capture relationships especially contextual relationships allowing operations that reveal semantic similarities now great thing is that pytorch already has an embedding layer included in it which we can directly leverage in our codes here in this particular code i am just using the data structure i'm not really using the embeddings inside a neural network i just want to show where this embedding layer exists in the pytorch package so we have this torch.nn we are importing it as nn so you are familiar with nn.linear here we have nn.embedding within the parameters you can mention how many rows you want in the embedding and how many columns you want so this num embeddings this should be based on how many unique words you have in your document collection if you are dealing with text data and this embedding dimension is number of columns you want in your embedding matrix embedding is such a layer from which you can retrieve rows by index if you use this variable embedding layer for the embedding then you can provide the indices here and the embedding layer will return you the rows in those certain indices so in this context what we did was in input data we mentioned that we want to see what we have in row index 1 row index 5 row index 7 and row index 4 42. so four rows will be returned uh, from this embedding layer in embedded output we will have four vectors of length 50 so here we are printing them so let's run this and once we print it here we have our row one this is row five this should be row seven and then the next one should be this is row 42 and each of these rows have 50 cells later in another video we'll see how we can train this model at this point when we are creating this one these are all random numbers actually but this matrix is trainable so we can include it as a layer of a neural network and we can allow the back propagation to update the values we have in the embedding layer as well so we'll see how we can train a model in such a way that creates the embeddings of words of a document collection in another video video thank you very much for watching see you soon in another video